Today we're going to be going over all my coffee gear on my coffee bar for 2022. This is going to be every single thing that you find here, where I got it, and some details about it. But before we dive into that, I just want to say welcome to Kabeen's Coffee Corner. This channel is designed to help you choose a coffee gear you want to brew with at home. You'll find a lot of different reviews and comparisons and stuff like that on this channel. Um, so if you want to see more of that, please like and subscribe. That really helps continue to produce YouTube videos for me and really get my content out there. I will also have these things called affiliate links to every item that I have here, which if you buy something from that affiliate link, I'll make a slight commission at no extra charge to you, which goes directly into funding my YouTube channel. I also have an Instagram account called Kabeen's Coffee Corner. You're welcome to follow me there. And lastly, if you really want to support me as a YouTuber, consider supporting me by using the platform Patreon more in the description below. Let's go ahead and dive into it. We're going to start up all the way at the top here. Um, right here we have a vintage Chemex that I have. It's an eight cup Chemex. Um, I don't use it very much, but it looks really cool. I found it at a thrift store a long time ago. Here we have the Origami Century Cup. Um, it's just the cup that I usually prefer when I do a pour over or a drip coffee. Um, I have the Bellman steamer that I've used for a long time when I've uh, steamed a milk for flares in the past. Um, this right here we have the uh, Craig Lynn Design uh, Espresso Shaker Funnel. This is similar to what you'd find on the Weber Workshop's Key Grinder. Um, they split off a long time ago and they redesigned this and I tip occasionally I use it. You basically shake it up uh, with coffee grounds in there and you pull out the center piece here and the coffee grounds fall directly in the pour filter. Um, next to it we have a Kalita 155 um, with the Fellow Stag um, Carafe. Uh, I typically like the Fellow um, pour over thing, but that's what I have in the office, and I use the Kalita here when I do pour overs. Um, we got a Stanley One Port Thermos. Um, we have the fellow uh, Joey Cub with a uh, Caldi's Coffee logo from St. Louis. Um, behind that, we have uh, the Bright, and then right next to it, right here, we have the Nitro Press, which makes Nitro Coffee. Um, and I've been enjoying that. Uh, let's move down to the next shelf here. We have um, some. Tarani and Giardelli caramel sauces and stuff like that um, if you want something a little sweet on the coffee bar. Um, then I have this little espresso cup with a, a lot of spoons for um, espresso stirring and stuff like that. Um, it's from New Zealand there. My brother got it for me. Um, right in front of that we have the Niche Zero brush. We have a wire cleaner brush for grinders and then we have a tasting spoon. Um, this is a funnel for a 58mm Porta filter from Flair. It has magnets on it, so it just simply sticks on top there um, and lets your grounds get in there. Um, right next to it, we have a uh, Weiss distribution tool, um, so needles in this little cup here. Stick it in there. I have two of these, the glossy black one, which has some thicker needles, and then the matte one on the side over here that has some thinner needles. Uh, in front of that, we have the Akaya uh, Cinco scale. It's a fifth anniversary scale that I typically use for traveling. Um, to give an idea, this is how small it is in your hand. Um, this is the Akaya Lunar right here. And then this is the Pearl right here, which we'll get in more to a little bit. So I got all three of three of Akaya scales and use most of them fairly regularly. Um, right next to it, we have the Fellow Atmos. Um, Bean jars here, uh, I don't typically, like, I use them, but I don't really like them that much because of the twisting lid, but they look really nice, and I write on them with chalk what beans are on there, so I typically have, like, decaf in here and then some other ones in there. Um, in front of it, we have two Flare 58 puck screens uh, for even water distribution above it, and um, we have a Hario scoop, a um, Allen key for adjusting some stuff on grinders, things like that. Um, then we have the Moda pitcher. Uh, this is from Dritten Aslea or something. He's like a, a guy in Germany who does latte art and is a barista there. Um, so we have this. This is what I use for bigger milk drinks, like a 12 ounce. Um, and then we have the Eddie milk cup from Fellow, um, which I use for anything smaller uh, for that. Um, next here we have the hand ground uh, filter holder. It holds AeroPress. Um, uh, all the other stuff except for Kalita Wave, basically, in there. Um, so I have that sit there with the filters that I don't use because I don't make pour-overs very much. Uh, but it's there when I need it. Uh, next to it, we have the uh, Flare 58mm tamper. Um, and then we have this Synonomo Essentials 
uh, tamping set. This is the tamper that comes with it. Um, you'll see the rest of that stuff on my bar in a little bit. Um, moving on down to, we're actually going to go back to the shelves. Shelves is just a board that I cut to the length of my coffee bar that I got at a local hardware store with some metal piping that I bought from Amazon um, to kind of hold it up there. So these are put in the studs so I can put a good amount of weight and they're not going to go anywhere. Um, I also lit up the entire coffee bar with some lights that I bought on um, Amazon. So you have lights going here all the way down the side of the wall because that was the only way I could do it on the bottom of that shelf and all around the coffee bar. And then I have this remote uh, so I can simply turn them on whenever I want to and then I can change the colors based off of the remote, um, which is kind of a fun thing. I enjoy it. Um, not necessary, but adding a little bit of light does make a difference um, when you're brewing, especially if it's dark outside. Right now it's in the middle of the day, so it's fairly light. Uh, we have the niche zero here on the end. Um, followed by that, we have the uh, a cup rinser here, so you just simply take a cup or a pitcher and put it on top rinses it out. I have a video explaining how I set this up and the benefits of that. Um, on the back of it, I have a little button that you can click to turn it on and off so I can disengage the rinser when need, needed. Uh, this is the Simonelli Essentials knock box. So basically it has this piece that goes on top, which has a port filter cradle, a funnel, and then a tamper spot on there. You can pick it up and then you knock it on there. Um, I don't really like it doing that way, so I just leave it as a knock box like this. I'm still trying to figure out the best knockbox solution for my bar. I just haven't found one that I've been super happy with. Um, the center of the main showpiece that I, I guess I have right now is currently the Breville Dual Boiler. Um, this is an older model that I picked up on fa Facebook Marketplace. Um, this machine will probably eventually change, um, but everything I hear isn't something that I'm borrowing from somebody or anything like that. This is what I currently own. I do have occasional different espresso machines that come in uh, that I review for YouTube that companies send me. Um, but all of this stuff is stuff that I own, stuff that's permanent here, or at least temporary until I replace it with something different. Um, so right now it's the Breville Dual Boiler, and I have it set up to the Slayer Mod so I can control the flow of the water with the hot water tap here. Um, I'm hoping to make a video on that at some point. And then I have this Etsy Porta filter uh, that's bottomless. I don't really like it that much. It seems a little cheaply made, but um, it is what it is, and it's at least a bottom four filter, bottomless Porta filter, and it gets the job done. So right here, I have a switch bot which allows me to turn on the espresso machine um, via Bluetooth, but it also lets me set schedules for it. So this is programmed to turn on twice a day, once over lunch and once in the morning. Um, so it's preheated and ready to go for me whenever I get here. Um, on top of the espresso machine, I have uh, three not neutral cups um, in matte black in uh, espresso size. I think it's a five ounce and a 12 ounce there. Um, then I have the not neutral Cortado cup. Um, I can't remember the exact names of all these things. Uh, the Kruv uh, espresso cup here. Um, the Fellow Monty cup, I believe. Um, the Fellow Joey cup. And I believe this is a rattleware uh, cup just to simply pour into other ones. Um, so if you're pouring into a thermos, this is what I use. It did have lines and indications on it, but after you wash it a good amount of times, um, that comes off pretty easily. Um, moving on a little bit, we have the or Eureka Atom 75 grinder. Um, I love this grinder. It's been great. It does make a little bit of a mess here and there, but this grinds in like three seconds for a, shot, a double shot of espresso. So 18 grams in about three seconds. It's been a joy to use. Um, the Porta filters fit pretty easily here. Um, I have I have a spouted one too, so I'm still working on adjusting this. But you simply put it there and you grind directly into it by pressing it down. Um, and it does a pretty good pretty good job, super quick, and I've really, really enjoyed it. It makes things so much faster than like using the Niche or the DF64 uh, turn, which is what was replaced. I replaced the DF64 with SSP burrs with this and I've enjoyed it a lot more. It is $1,400 though, and that's a question that it might not be worth for you. Um, but for me, and for the reviews that I do and things like that, there's days that I, I make 12 shots of espresso and that makes it so much easier. Um, next year we have the Flare 58. Um, this was one of, I pre-ordered it right on launch and ha had it for seven months and 
I really love it and it's a real problem when I can't put it on my coffee bar because I have other things because this is one that I really, really enjoy using even over the Breville um, and things like that. It just produces a very great shot. Um, in front of it, we have the Akai Pearl, um, a Barista Hustle Tamper, which is my current tamper of choice, and some tamping mat uh, that I got online. Um, and then the Akai Lunar Scale. These are the older models. They're not the USB-C ones but there's no need to replace them. Um, next to it on the sides, I have Cafe Let uh, microfiber cloths to clean the steam wands, arms, and um, I also put it over a bottomless portafilter when I rinse out my bottomless portafilter over here. Over here, I just have some black rags. Um, the, entire, the entire bench here that you're seeing is the Brewer 43 inch workbench from Ikea. Um, my dad custom finished this for me, so he added these side rails on there for towel storage, um, it has no sides and backs or fronts to it, so we added this top. He We sealed off this top part so we wouldn't have to worry about liquids. Um, and then we added sides to it, and then we added a front to it, and then we added a back to the top part of it. I'll explain that a little bit more so you could see no cables and everything's hiding underneath before that. Um, right below here, um, we have another shelf. And this has a bunch of not neutral cups. Um, this one's the bone china one, but various sizes. And then we have one and camp, and camp, and camp, and cap cup from Spy House Coffee in Minnesota, where I went on my honeymoon. Um, and then some more cups. The remote. We have an, a niche blower um, to remove grounds back in there. And I have some of the. Uh, Kaleo 55 filters in there. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm going to take the camera off the tripod and we are going to go down into the coffee bar and I'm going to talk about some of that stuff. I'm hoping this audio is okay. I don't typically film from this direction, so please bear with me a little bit on here. Um, so this is the coffee cart as a whole. Um, a couple things to note that's not standard is this front here, this the side here, the side there, the backing there, the backing there, and then on the sides of the coffee bar, you can see that it has sides there as well. So none of that stuff there is, it's, it's all black metal and it comes with this top right here. Um, so this is kind of what it looks like. Here's what it looks like on the inside. So inside, I have quite a bit of stuff. Um, we're going to start with this white thing on the left here. This white thing is a pump. This pump pulls water from this jug into the pitcher rinser to clean drinks. That's above. Um, so this water goes in through this tube and then up through another tube to use the pitcher rinser here. This jug is the dis the the drain. So you can see it's really kind of gross. It doesn't smell really at all unless it gets really bad and you use a lot of milk drinks. But this has been sitting here for the week and we can't smell it even though it looks really gross on the inside. So that's kind of how I have this all wired in. Um, right above here, you will see a black rod here. This is um, outlets. So I have outlets like every three inches on here to be able to hook up anything I want to up above um, pretty easily. Um, I also have an extra knock box down here from Breville. These doors slide, and in here I have my water. I use a Brita. I don't use third wave water because I haven't had a problem with Brita. I'm not opposed to third wave water, but that's just kind of how I do things. Um, I have the Fellow Stag EKG Plus, which is a Bluetooth kettle, um, so I can turn it on and adjust the temperature um, anywhere in my house with it. Um, but it has to be down here because I don't do pour overs enough and there's just not enough space up top and I really wouldn't have made changed this coffee bar at all but um, that's just kind of how it is um, so I'm going to slide this over as much as I can and behind that we have this back basket in this basket I just have a bunch of miscellaneous stuff so let's go ahead and check out that um, so in here I have a mirror for my espresso machine so I can see the bottomless shot. Um, I have a light for taking some photos for Instagram, a couple of extra clean cafe lit towels, AeroPress Go, um, some uh, Cafe Zena cleaner, 
Um, it gets rid of all the gunk, and it also cleans stainless steel thermos as well. Um, a couple of random baskets. The Airscape, which is my preferred choice for um, a coffee canister, but it just doesn't look as pretty. Um, we have a Breville portafilter. Um, we have typically what I have in my machine, machines is home blend. Um, so I had a couple of random bags there. Uh, this is also a blend that I've been, or a coffee that I've been drinking recently. Also another coffee that's in there too. So some random bags, another basket, some more um, tablets, and then some nitro press chargers. And this is the top of the Seminole Essentials kit. So this is a tamping cradle, um, and then the top lid of it, and then another Allen key. Uh, so that's what I have on my coffee bar, um, and what I have everywhere inside that I have at close access to um, my brew bar when I need to get certain things. Um, yeah. I really hope you enjoyed this video of me talking about all the stuff that I have a privilege of owning. Now, if you're into coffee, this is a very intimidating setup. There's a lot of things, but you don't need this to make good quality coffee. You aren't required to have two machines and, and two grinders and a pitcher insert and all this other stuff here to make good quality coffee at home. The reason that I have all this gear is simply because I do this YouTube channel. I review a lot of things and it's just accumulated with that. Um, but the best coffee bar you can simply have is learning to use the gear that you already have well. You don't need to spend $8,000 on an espresso machine or $1,500 on a grinder to get good quality espresso at home. Um, but this is the gear that I have. I'm very happy with the majority of it. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions on any of this gear, if there hasn't been something that I've covered enough on a review, uh, please let me know and I would love to answer anything you have and help you out with any questions that you have. And my job here as a YouTuber in doing this channel is to serve you guys and to help a purpose of saving money by not having to go out and buy all of this stuff, but buying one thing and buying the right thing the first time. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please like and subscribe and thank you so much for watching.